Well, after teaching 201 this semester, and I just did an hour-long review session with both of my classes, I realized that there's a major misconception, actually two major misconceptions about prokaryotic cells and uh, endosymbiosis. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna disprove these myths that prokaryotes are limited in size by diffusion and that endosymbiosis occurred when one cell engulfed another cell. Hey buddy. Okay, let's get to it. We got some work to do ahead of us. Okay, let's start with the first myth and this one concerns the, what limits the size of prokaryotic cells. First of all, it's not diffusion across the membrane. I do not know why this is in every textbook or in a lot of textbooks anyways, but it's actually absurd. What limits the size of prokaryotic cells compared to eukaryotic cells is energy production. Let me get my whiteboard to show you. Okay, let me explain this really quick. We have a prokaryotic cell. It's tiny. Here's a eukaryotic cell. It's much larger. And in fact, it could have like a, a thousand times the volume of a prokaryotic cell. These things are much larger. So historically, people have said, you know, that diffusion limits the size of a prokaryotic cell. And the reason why eukaryotic cells can get larger is because they have this fancy endomembrane system. That is wrong. It's just so wrong. But it's based on this idea. If I've got one by one centimeters, that equals uh, one centimeter squared, right? I'm writing this left-handed. So I'm gonna switch around and do this right-handed for us. But if, I, and if I've got a volume, it's one by one by one, which equals one cubic centimeter. Okay, now let's say I go two by two for my surface, you know, length times width. I now have four, oops, centimeters squared. But if I do the volume, you know, volume goes by uh, length times width times height, hence three dimension, that's gonna equal eight cubic centimeters. Let's go up one more. Now I go three by three length times width. Well, I've got three uh, square centimeters, uh, sorry, which equals nine square centimeters. Sorry about that. But if I go three by three by three, that equals 27 cubic centimeters for my volume. So as you can see, as you grow in size, your volume grows at the third power and your surface area grows at the second power. So you can see one, four, eight, one, nine, 27. The volume, you gain a lot more volume much more quickly than surface area. And people would say, you know, that, that limits the cell size because of diffusion across the membrane. That is like wrong, very wrong. There are entire multicellular animals that are thousands of cells, millions of cells, parasites, flatworms, these things survive just fine based on diffusion. So the point that I'm making here is diffusion is not the answer at all. I mean, if we applied something called fixed law, which I'm not gonna go into fixed law here, it basically looks at the, at the, the, um, the membrane, which is measured here in nanometers, and then the width would be in uh, micrometers. You know, you're looking at billions of a meter, millions of a meter, and you know, a water molecule, an oxygen molecule, any solute would go across this in a millisecond, right? I mean, Fick's law, the, the calculates the rates of diffusion across a, a membrane. You know, diffusion in no way limits the size of a prokaryotic cell. That is just completely wrong. So what's the answer here? What limits? a prokaryotic cell from becoming as large as a eukaryotic cell. It turns out it's energy production. You see, the secret to life is a process called chemiosmosis. This is the secret to life because every living organism on this planet has to take in energy from the environment and uses energy to create order through metabolic processes. But the energy currency of life is a TP. And surprisingly, every cell on this planet has electron transport chains that basically pump protons across a membrane, creating an electrochemical gradient. And then these protons 
are out of equilibrium with their environment, so they flow through a molecule called ATP synthase. And when they flow through this, the energy of their, their literally their kinetic energy flowing through here takes ADP, adenosine diphosphate, and jams a phosphate group on it and makes it ATP. Every cell on the planet pumps protons across a membrane and then uses that electrochemical gradient through chemiosmosis to make ATP. This is how cells get usable energy in the form of ATP, the energy currency of life. Now, prokaryotic cells, they're pumping it across their membrane here. So, our surface to volume area ratio matters because as these cells get larger and larger and larger, they will produce less and less ATP relative to their volume. So it's energy production that limits the size of a prokaryotic cell. It has nothing to do with the fusion. Eukaryotic cells, well, you all know the powerhouse of the cell is an organelle called the mitochondria. These were once free living bacteria that merged with an archaean that evolved into eukaryotic cells through endosymbiosis. Now, we've got eukaryotic cells. Eukaryotic cells can keep getting larger and larger and larger because I can just add more and more mitochondria in them. And in fact, some eukaryotic cells, they have like thousands of mitochondria in them. And some eukaryotic cells even have like millions of mitochondria. So that's what limits the cell size, energy production. It is not diffusion. That is a myth they told you. All right. That's myth number one, busted. Stay tuned for my next video where I bust the second myth that somehow a proto-eukaryotic cell engulfed an aerobically respiring bacterium.